We have some guy, mate. Hey, David. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah always. How's uh, it going? Helping uh, people, you know, in the world. A lot of things, matter of fact. Um, you know, when I was a, a young black, of course, like, um, growing up on the islands, like, uh, I had sometimes several thousand animals, and I look after those animals, you know. Um, and you could see lots of things, and, but you have to see um, everything, um, you know, healing up naturally. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and then, um, interesting, like, uh, people break bones, all sorts of things, but, you know. Um, and uh, they go into where the hospital, and uh, pretty much, actually, if you ask anybody there, they haven't seen anything heal up like this naturally. Um, the answer always is no. Uh, yeah, um, it's pretty much actual that where somebody's got some people, you've got to have screws and bio, uh, screws and they've got to have a bit of surgery and this sort of thing, you know? Yes? Mm-hmm. Interesting, like a lot of things actually really, no matter where you could look, you'll see um, up the cost of whatever and um, it's like a pretending service often for some financial gain ever more. But if we could talk a bit about it, because like where a world could have lost its way just a bit, but um, some um Freddie's presence, you know, that one could follow. Um, we've been talking a bit about heat and um, cold shock protein, which is really essential where someone's healing bone. Uh, just to say it's anywhere, matter of fact, the whole body um, uses these hot and cold shock protein. Um, that's why, like, in your training, um, you're doing what you can to bring people up to their uh, a, a maximal level relative to, uh, you know, uh, stress them, yes? Um, yes, in their sir. fitness, that's right, um, and you're raising their temperature and they're managing that and get, uh, developing these heat shock proteins, very important, uh, because that prepares the body uh, to managing uh, fitness. That's an environmental thing. Um, and you know that, like, when you're born, you're only born with so much a muscle, that's it, that's all the cells you'll ever have the rest of your life. But... Um, we could look at a baby's muscles and then um, look at your muscles around your neck and think, this is what happened there, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, oh there's muscles, they're huge, and they grew, and they really grew, and they grew from a, the blood uh, corpuscle having excavated the shock, meaning outside the vessel, but stuck where the endothelial cell was there, where some stress was of the myosin action filament. And when you sleep at night, the... Uh, um, double spore catch of the, the uh, corpuscle migrate and aggregate and huge differentiate into the myosin actin filament, um, filling things out and building the biggest protein that you actually have in your body, um, a huge matter of fact, out of all the proteins that we have, um, it's what stores, um, you know, uh, glucose, glycogen and things. But um, coming back full circle, you've got a bone broken, let's say the collarbone, whatever, uh, um, and uh, it could be overlapping even, like sometimes it puts some full of a bike, like four centimetres or whatever, but um, the biomechanics of the body, as it's used, it goes bring that bone out to the size it's supposed to be, where you use it as it heals. If you don't use it as it heals, now you know that in the time past when somebody had an injury, you always would use, um, you know, um, you'd, you'd ice and elevation um, and rest um, and um, this is um, yeah you use ice and you use but you don't use rest anymore you use exercise instead yes oh, oh okay <laughs> Which is, yes yeah uh, totally why because the biomechanics is starting to actually cause your muscle to actually uh, you know be in the proper condition so, for instance, the osteoclast, they move in and they reabsorb bone, which ends up, which would have, could have been overlapping with this example. Osteoclast have moved in there. You use heat hot and cold shock protein, you use comfort compounds, and you do some few things like that. You'd be surprised. The osmolytic nutrient that the body could produce there goes right in and actually assist the cause and move all that, reabsorb that bone. Um, and then dissolve it, and so where the overlap was, it's all sort of gone. Now, the osteoblast, uh, the other cells there, yes, yeah, and they migrate, forming into new bone, and um, providing that you've used your muscles and your arm, or whatever, where this was, <clears throat> it's going to cause the biomechanics to absolutely only be in a set what, like it's supposed to be, um, and pretty much the bone's going to grow out to what it should, um, and 
low, like like let's say four centimetres overlap was, mm. by the time the bone, it, it's all um, knitted back, smooth as it would, and it'll be a little bit larger there where the break was. Um, and uh, it'll um, and as you use the muscle, um, and the arm, it's going to cause it to to actually be able to grow to the the, the degree that it's supposed to relative, and maybe you're left with something that's just close to being exact like it was relative yet, given the chance. And so, mm, um, if many times over, if somebody came a bit too late, um, they went, oh wow, but it's to ossify. I don't think we're going to operate and so. So now, these people all get to see something heal up more. They go, wow, oh, well, Jesus, I healed up and I don't have all those kids and screws. I wonder what happened, you know? Um, so, um, we use a uh, beautiful uh, substance, you know, like in the uh, comfrey um, root um, that you do a comfrey compress with. I mean, it seems like it's quite amazing, but in our formulas, uh, osmolytic elements, uh, and um, sorolin is a plant which it has a citrus, bergamot, clove, sort of like uh, phytotaxin types of molecules, which you can also find in cabbage and the black pump, black um, uh, the BCT formula that we have, um, wild thyme, the vacuees, um, a variety of these eutol sulfur molecules, which you could really just only be able to get something inside the cell. Um, and um, these heat shock proteins, which could you use fire for red or sauna, or you use exercise and stuff, you're driving these phytonutrients in. It's a time that actually you could do a little bit of supplementing before you actually do your exercise and something bring the temperature up. Oh, wow. um, and then and then go ahead and teach people just a bit, um, go ahead and um, do the abrasive just a bit as part of your training. Um, once you've heated yourself up good, I go ahead and quick smart cool yourself down somewhere where you're doing a shower or something and you really it just to be part of the training in your business, you, you, you do it abrasive, you bring it down to be abrasive and keep it at an abrasive level for a little bit and that's sort of really what causes these cold shock proteins which actually will clear away um, um, and reabsorb the ends of that bone and assist cause osteoclast to be functional. So that's why I just put off and on to um, a condition which is like that. Um, and so you've really got um, molecules um, which which really like fire or heat shock yeah. uh, no protein, like protein 24, for instance, which really is engaging with beta amino butyric uh, acid um, or BABA, like BABA, BABA, BABA which induces primary uh, defense, yeah. you see. Hamster. Um, hamster? Yeah. And you've got, um, these cold shock, uh, yeah, I'll do it on Sunday, which is essential, like in our form, maybe tomorrow. Like these phytoelectric synthesis, um, that stimulates the calcium. So, I'll, I'll do it Sunday. Uh, very selectiveness of care, uh, going into uh, those forms that we just mentioned is way more than just like a vitamin C complex, whole food vitamin complex, which you've got oh, yeah. the silica there, which absolutely helps as a template cause your body to be able to produce protein again. See, so it's more than just like, oh, you've got to take this, but no, it's teaching your body how to produce this again. See? Oh and that's God. what nature does. Yes? You've got, your, you've got to have your hands on. See? It has to be like nature. I was when, when I was a little boy, and I looked at this egg, you know, and I said, I had to learn how to tell if it was a fertilized egg. And so I'd hold it up to the light, you know, and I'd see if it had a, had a red blood corpuscle in it, because that would be the first thing that formed. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody sort of knew that, but nobody could, could say nothing about it. I was thinking to myself, well, that's a red blood corpuscle. <laughs> it sure is. Oh, yeah. and, and I was thinking, well, how did that red blood corpuscle form? Just in my mind as a boy, 12 days old egg after three days is 600% more uh, you know, element in the egg. And it never took any nutrition, none. And there's no way that all that solid substance could have ever come from the shell. That was impossible. I could see that things were life forward transmutated, one thing from into another, and that wow. life was um, growing a lot of things. I mean, that this explained everything. Now, I didn't know what the rest of the world was. I only just had an idea I could see this. Um, and lo and behold, lectins. that comes to be the fact that I learn about things like study Labachowski's work in Washington and Tushima's work in Japan and in Hindapapuesis which is a study of blood formation. 
You're probably bringing up lectins because of the quinoa. And what I would say to that is, I believe, and I'm just, I guess the word is guessing, I'm guessing, that the sprouting of the quinoa removes the lectins. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Dr. Job spoke of, oh man, it's been so long since I used this word, enzyme inhibitors in some of the seeds. And when you sprout them, they become deactivated because the enzyme inhibitors are, the purpose is to keep the seed in a dormant state until it is able to become a new plant the next year. And that what that does when you eat them, it blocks nutrient absorption. So I think that the because the the pumpkin seeds, the quinoa and the chia are um, sprouted or at least activated by being soaked, I think the lectins are inactive or converted or whatever. But I definitely know what you're talking about. I watched Gundry. Um, I'll ask Jub about it because he gives me the opportunity to ask questions. That's a, actually a great question. Let me put that in my uh, notes for the next interview. I want to ask him about seed oils. Um, tardive dyskinesia. I'm going to put this up at the top, lectins, because that's a great question. Thanks, AOC. How are you doing otherwise? People do read a bit more about that, but I could see how important it was that, um, you know, you had to have proper level of carbon and this sort of thing. So, Another thing I could say maybe is uh, everything's got something wrong with it, right? What's the perfect food? Don't say beef. It should be more than seven percent. If it's lower than that, you should breathe it off because of you you were mouth breathing. A bunch of always nose breathe for the rest of their life and lay more straight on their back as they sleep. I mean the molecular sort of communication which is existing was really poor. So I'm going to put the recipe together exactly as it's listed here with the. When? Liquid ingredients on the bottom. This way, the blender, the blade pulls everything down into the liquid. You don't have anybody panting like crazy. That's just completely not the right way to exercise whatsoever. Must be just relaxed and um, quite relative, breath relative. Okay. And train it. That's more for things such. Um, and um, the response between the cells, you're always going to be conferring more. Um, their communication, providing you've got salt, a mineral um, there, and it's the conditioning of that production. And then when you sweat, you're going to lose, you're going to need to make sure that you're keeping minerals. People exercising, making sure they're putting minerals into everything that they do. Okay. And then they're going to keep water in their blood. You want to perform good? Right. Keep water in your blood. If you don't have minerals, you're going to sweat it out. And what's going to happen? Suddenly you've got two litres of water, not enough. That's right, don't have the hydraulics to lift your arms. And has anybody ever felt they went, went to the limit like that? Yes. And that's what happens, you see? So if you if you moderate what that is, you're able to keep it. That's a fitness where somebody is, and that you sustain yourself more. And nobody's going to say, yes. hey, you don't sustain yourself more, you're going to actually have an edge. You sure do. You've got, you've got an edge, which is about endurance. Plus, if you've got good style, you know, if you come down on something, you're going to come in where you use your force. Now you're using your force right. If you just go at something, that's going to be wrong. Because why? The force is not moved back into your body. And when it is, this is like how you've got the full force of your whole weight of yourself. But if you don't, you won't, and one has to know how to go down when they're doing something like this versus straight or necessarily up. 
when you go up, you could put your weight in when you're coming from the ground. Um, but when you're coming down versus just going straight at something, you're putting all your weight into <laughs> what you're going, what, what you're pushing, striking forward. Mm. Um, so concept to think about for this, you could, you could think about this, you'll see a biomechanics going on, it's like a bigger force that can be measured. But else there is no plantain in the organism you're supposed to have in your, in your intestinal tract. I mean, we're vegetarian, we, we are plant-based, we're not animal eaters. And there's 30 different surfactants that show we're not. Why? Because it's all accumulated in the, in the nucleus, can't be broken down. And we can't eat anything from insects or birds or fish or animals. Um, and um, because the surfactant can't be broken down properly. Um, and um, it impacts um, protein transcription in the cell otherwise. But these cold stock proteins can come in and help clear up and actually... Um, renew DNA by having proper ribosome and things which are these tiny small particles which protein is made up out of and associating those proteins into the proper um, uh, order that they should be and finding where you know, things are out of order and um, stipping that out and putting a new copy back in there. Um, life colloid do this called ubiquitin, ubiquitin 1, 2 and 3 and these are very specific selected for DNA and each of our formulas. So, so I was looking at this in 1978 and I really have been investigating things and just like I could just tell you like a small story and I don't have to really be um, nice. you know, coming, getting that from anywhere. It's just, no, it's just like uh, somebody, you could ask me something about temperature, for instance, or anything. What's temperature dependent? Has anybody actually talked about what this is? And what would be the reason by 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit but uh, you, we have a set temperature. And then when we have that set temperature, potassium is kept in your blood, the red blood corpuscle. And when it gets lower than that, potassium isn't kept proper in your red blood corpuscle. Temperature is very dependent, and you've got to have sodium and potassium to pass over the membrane, and that causes electrical potential. Um, and what I used to do, um, like, uh, jump cell rejuvenation and these, uh, rejuvenation training for things in hot, you always be putting in the whole bag functioning so you'd be, people would be getting rid of don't work hard, should try but bust only in their speech, and everybody would be getting, getting, getting rid of all their internal dialogue, and, and through life, they'd be focused and they had a message to get rid of all their internal dialogue and stuff. Okay. And we would do, Andy and I, a um, quality of life index beforehand, sometimes I've come some few weeks before, and then um, we would do one pretty much like a few weeks after training and then another one like a few months afterwards just to see if what had changed. And it would be just radical, actually. The quality of life index that people had, and if you could imagine, actually, just for a moment in time, you really can start to become a and you really feel leisure and you've got a great security freedom and you've got a feeling of a social belongingness and this is the things which cause well-being for sure and the quality of your life, where you are, where you move toward life, food and your framing is possible, you're really more in whole back function, you've got a lot more social welfare, a reflectiveness and you've got a great expectation and an in a, in a enhanced quality of life and so... Mm -hmm. You've got access to things, haven't you? You've got access to reward more. And um, you've got really internal motivation um, because... Um, oh, that's, that's doing, better than sorry, kick in the pants, like K-I-T-A, which spells kick in the pants. Um, and you've got... Doing okay for the most part. It'd be just... be nice to just exist by light energy. Uh, I know exactly what you mean. 
Um, you know, I always have a problem when people ask me how I am. Uh, I want to be honest, but I don't want to tell the truth. Because it's not good. Um, this building is so toxic. There's a natural gas leak. Um, the rug, I just noticed today. Well, I didn't know it just noticed today, but I really noticed today. The rug smells like kitty litter because of the mice. And my dad's not going to fix anything, so I'm going to have to fix it myself. I'm definitely looking forward to the warm weather. Of course, movement for an internal generator is where you're learning, growing, achieving, getting recognition, and these sorts of things. And these sorts of things um, people participate in day and day out. I also hope Bitcoin so, blows up. I have. I made $200 on Bitcoin so far. <laughs> oh my God, that's a lot for me. How you perform those elements? You can calibrate <laughs> the things that you're doing, and what's going on more inside, and what's your your decision making strategy and this sort of thing. So personal health is Bitcoin can go much higher because it broke past its previous all-time high. Well, the only reason why I bring it up, not that, uh, you know, I don't know that we have to talk about it, but because you're out in that area, right? Silicon Valley area. So that's the only reason it just came to mind when I thought about it. But yeah, now I'm thinking I should have put more into it. I, I have a, a 500 a month client or student, and I took three months in advance and I put it all on Bitcoin and I went from 1500 to uh, 2000 over the past like two weeks or whatever and then I put 500 on Doge Dogecoin so I'm actually four months um, probably because he texted me already and I didn't respond yet 
period. smoothness and flow and, and then fall asleep fresh but feel very fatigued adrenal fatigue and then they and then what happens to people's body if you check it out they get that fatty hump from the shoulders yep and now they they got these pink little purple sort of stretch marks on the skin and things where they start to lose weight and that sort of thing and their blood pressure generally have a bit of challenge and that sort of thing they feel quite irritable and they've got a soggy, soggy, a saggy abdomen, which is really oh, a, the overproduction of cortisol, which causes the bell, it's called belly hang. Um, um, belly and butt hang is because, you know, somebody has um, excessive cortisol not broken down properly. Wow. And, co and cortisol um, eventually slowly becomes lost because it's just like fat stuck, somebody's trying to yeah, have it. But always insulin would have never ever had its proper uh, a, a sensitivity and so things just like this sort of cells um, and you can see weight gain massively and then eventually it's just weight loss you see so isn't it something like 40 percent of the united states um here adults are basically obese i think and 7.7 percent or 7.7 .7 or something i mean maybe severe obese and so 74 percent of people are showing that they're overweight um, and many, um, even some uh, uh, ethnicities, um, have the highest rate of obesity. So pancreatic function declines because of all the sediment that's being eaten. I mean, all a lot of don't want cancer try, but must only and um, um, sort of language. So big fan of crypto. When things hey. are smooth and. I bet you got in early being over your, there on, the, on that yeah, side of the country. Yeah, comfortable. You can either sort of like sort of roll as deep as you. Otherwise, their speech can become what's called cleared. I mean, and I'll give you an example of that in a second. But um, cleared language is always coming from the amygdala and the tegmentum of the brain. And But we're now firing it just doesn't rich. let the frontal cortex function. So, you know, it's coming from the adversity componentry. So speech, which is sort of cleared, to give you an example, it would be like, if you talk like this, it's going to be bad for you. <laughs> um, that's a pretty good example of clip language. So it's really like a uh, rap is clipped and uh, it's um, the analog of a depressive uh, neurology within ourselves. Um, so it's after a program where somebody has, it's a really great deal of improvement that's kept afterward. Um, and it does show people's quality of life index really improves quite radical. Um, and um, it's really what's pre, meaning before you think or you do anything, precognitive. We all of us have a set of things that's inside um, and that already is set. And so could some of these things that we're talking about today in our program cause things to be reset below, to cause new information to be coded better and better and more powerful way mm -hmm. but, so. uh, the, pa the pancreas and the brother gland must be restored oh, yeah. and the only way that you could do that is to improve hygiene of your blood and when you improve the hygiene of your blood you, your cup of cells can produce more albumin which transports everything and only that you can raise albumin that you would we really have, uh, clean the hygiene up of the of the blood um, but in our bright being mm, okay. ever more, you know, it's really just because you're focused and you're getting gained agreement. And what happens when you haven't focused on that? Well, that's not going to be right. Everybody who has success, they really focus on more having getting a gained agreement. And isn't this experience more of happiness and grace and things just flowing? And where somebody's learned that there's four... Okay, I'm conditioned to say I'm okay when I'm really not also. So I guess... Not doing all that great, to be honest. Uh. I'm sending out heart waves. You know, if you ever need anybody to talk to, not that talking does anything, but 
open invite. Come to New York. Help me greenovate. We can greenovate this building. You're into architecture, right? Let's gut it. Let's gut it and turn it into a health center, you know, see? Together. We'll help each other feel better. Doing something. Just a thought. <sighs> Wish you would have gotten earlier, huh? Yeah, I didn't even have any ability to get in until recently because kind of a long story, Cherry, um, she's been on my stream a couple of times. She needed somebody to be her payee for her social security. Apparently her family wasn't doing it for her. So I was like, all right, I mean, no sweat off my back. I just got to go down to the office, fill out some paperwork. And um, she had like six grand in back payments and that's sitting in my account. And I said, you know, Cherry, we're going to be training together for a few months, 500 a month. So can I get one or two in advance? She said, yeah. So I was like, fuck it, you know, I've been broke before and I'm still technically broke. So if, if it works out, which I hope it's not a scam. That's my only thing with crypto AOC is like, is it just a scam of the Illuminati to get everybody, the rest of everybody's money and then just completely wipe everyone? that we do and they're the biggest violence things that anybody does and one is just us adding fleeing a walking off leaving put, shutting down stopping and controlling like being a control freak um, and doing those sorts of things which is within ourselves the second most form uh, of violence is where people dissociate not actually focused on what they should or could which would be wise to in a moment but suddenly bringing a lot of other things up and just to control um, so that's called distraction. Another one is uh, to in, in, um, to interrogate where questions that one has of themselves or others is really other than causing your model to feel good and large. So it means it shrinks the model. That's called to interrogate. And intimidate is like I think that do this. You're gonna be you're gonna be like you know, lost to something sort of thing that you care for. Um, and um, so that's intimidation. These are four forms of violence, Arthur. But when we could stop that for one year, please, and then what one does then is to really put in the resource data. So you're focusing on, um, as you're a student, you're focusing on what you could do to be better at what you're doing. And you're thinking about excellence where you are and degrees of excellence, because it's really a comfort more that you could be having more bright and fresh where you are as you're listening to what this is here. Um, and um, pay attention, because we've really got some really great shows more of those coming up. But championing people... Um, like you do, um, Luke, um, to get behind the uh, kids and people in your team and um, and building um, these skills, um, which you've always, uh, which I think is really admirable, said, of course, that raise a healthy child, raise a healthy village, raise a healthy nation. Um, and that's one of the most confused things anybody can ever do. <laughs> um, but ch championing uh, bliss, which comes from your achievement and achieving emptiness by getting rid of all your internal dialogue is the start, you know. And so what's the evidence of that somebody comes before you? Can can you hear and see and feel that somebody actually is focused on things which is going to be more beneficial for them or are they still focused on stuff that's really totally not beneficial? So drop all the stuff that's not beneficial, keep the stuff that is, and focus on the things which is ever more coming from within ourselves because actually if a thought came from you, wow, that's pretty good. Because 90% of most people's thinking it's really something that's coming from other people and it's just like, yeah, most people are doing sort of a mind reading there, which is pretty easy to sort of drop that stuff. But being more timeless um, is what leisure is in recreation and play and having a more positive relatedness and expectation, you see. So what would happen if somebody has a more positive expectation? It's just that the possibility something exists, that's all. It doesn't mean that you'd be going, oh, well, well, I had a positive expectation and that didn't end up happening. Um, it's that 
you've got a possibility of something existed and you should be focused on the possibility or you stay with the possibility and then what's next after that. If you if you haven't received something, you've got a great strategy for managing um, uh, failure. And so receptiveness is really being in receptivity and you can't be putting these things, which I'm saying, into something else, um, stuffing it into some other model or something which would be really disastrous. Um, something okay. which we're doing, like we're talking about, we're sort of getting a pre-cognitive meaning. Um, things are getting lined up more underneath. So, for instance, like when you use direction, you focus on going forward, not back, and you, focus, and you, you think about that in your speech. Is it that you've gone forward where your focus is? And is it that you focus on what we have within and now you're associated. If you use direction outside, away from where something was, that's being more dissociated. There's a value in being associated and dissociated. It's just really, you are got to get rewarded more for being associated more in life rather than showing up completely dissociated where most people are. But, um, a usefulness is really actually um, seeing what somebody can do. But how many of us are actually innovative who have grown up in an environment where you could be more innovative and you could be adapted, very adaptive to get something done like a gorilla with a stick. Um, and um, otherwise, there's a lot of uh, advertising. Trying to visit family in South Carolina and Florida. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a bit of a trip. Florida to NY. Might as well, though. Might as well if you're, if you're already out and about. Go for it. I don't know how to talk about it. There's only talk about these water pores and things to assist block all the um, cell chapting more. And it's... And Keflins and Dolphins and these things, which that's cause you make feel you feel good, functioning more, and um, that's just what diminishes this And these beautiful endorphins and Keflins, um, they block all the um, cell channels and things, which um, calcium channels and things, which would cause excitation, and they open up all these water pores and things to assist cause hydration and things, and it's just sort of adjusting the cell. Um, so, there's only 12 times during the day where you really release your human growth hormone when you're in a parasympathetic state, and um, that's maybe some talk which would be great for us to actually talk about at some point, but um, when you're talking about self cell rejuvenation, you're triggering osmolytic element to come in, and you're emptying the stone out of the liver and your and pancreas, and you're improving the low molecular osmolytics of the of your intestinal tract, so that you can have all these proper proteins which you were supposed to have. And the brain gland is the largest organ, more or less, in its function. It has to be giving you a, 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 a north negative. Otherwise, 
there's a signal going on which you could just see in behavior. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so for, so for instance, when, when someone is overdone done stuff and they don't have minerals, overdoing things, got to get the minerals. Well, you're going to see withdrawal rule and that the person sort of withdraws and they, they feel sort of not too much supported, even if support is there. Okay. They feel like they're being punished a little bit and um, they'll uh, have knee-jerked into trauma pretty quick. Um, and a lot of that is because it's just a reenactment of a trauma reenactment syndrome of the past. Um, but the, but um, the, the, the thinking and, condition, and behavior is very conditioned, <clears throat> and the endocrine disruption where any behavior is is really a lack of focus of attention and uh, a missed opportunity to learn how to res respond um, to how to change some prejudice and, and the excess where something has gone on where a showing of that is sort of a real deep distraction, perhaps even, and a fixatedness, some nambulistic sort of trance, preferring just to do nothing during the day, and being happy to escape because one did nothing. It's like, oh my God, you see, this is really disastrous. Mm. Um, 78% of your nervous system you've got to have to get something to be passed on, and most of these people can't get anything to be passed on. Part of themselves want to do something, part of it doesn't, and so then nothing does take place because you've got 78% of your nervous system going to be behind something you get something really passed on. And so be, because there's no proper amphoterics, no proper amphiphilics, no proper permittivity that's existed where um, salts are, where someone really doesn't have much far infrared, they're losing all that far infrared, and it's really an ultraviolet catastrophe that's sort of just going white like a sheep and losing it all. Um, and with all... Um, you could see sort of someone not to be too social and uh, dopamine and serotonin, um, access certain disruption, you know, and obsessive compulsive disorders by not being able to turn a thought off, even when you say, oh, is there another way to think about something? And somebody can't, it's just not possible to turn their thinking off, which of course it is. It's just start to. You'd be noticed that you're the one who's in charge. You see, not somebody else and says, Oh, I can't do my thinking. I was like, Oh, oh. go start, start thinking about how you're doing that. The syntax of being in your kinesthetic auditory and visual self is the way that you have more hobo patterning. And if somebody's focused on what success is, it's an outcome, and you focus just simply on what's supposed to be versus, Oh, oh something in the past. Um, it's a really uh, slow. You've got more human growth hormone. You've got levels of insulin resistance to be perfect and you've got a clearness um, you know, um, of um, death and disease and you've got really uh, uh, otherwise a lot of brain freeze going on um, and uh, behaviour that really is more analog sculpted uh, other than actually really in the integrated meaning uh, pleasure and interest has caused things to flow within you but, but so light food is really low phosphate. Light food is low methionine. One can learn about those things. Those things are not too good for us. Uh, it can't have artificial light that kills. Um, where people are in prison, some places and stuff don't have proper light that kills you. That harms. That's wrong. That's unethical. Absolute and utter. And anybody who's not paying attention to this is immoral unless somebody actually speaks about this. This is cruel and unusual punishment going on where people are um, and wake up. But nidulous of stone formed from tiny, increpid particle from fats and uh, acid material, which is, get, get deposited in the connective tissue um, and becomes a corpora anasia, which is a calcium phosphate, sort of a stone and heavy metal, deposit from these nano life colloid particles which form into the stone and where people have lost B12 which comes from B17 and um, uh, transmutated into carbamine in the last three sections of your um, your uh, small intestine <clears throat> before it enters into the uh, cecum. Um, and you've got also B vitamins that if you've got proper life colloid there you've got capacity to be able to clear away all spike protein and stuff. And these incur because um, you've got natural light cycle, but you don't have it if you've got artificial light, which is kept on all the time, 
and completely destroy someone's brain and mind. So that is not natural that you would ever do that. Now, there will anybody leave life on when somebody is supposed to sleep. You see, that's cruel and unusual punishment. Wrong. How dare the world make money and bet on the stock market and put all that money into where things are? And that's growing the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund and all these things from prison and court bonds. How bad is that? Anyway, but I'm coming back where everybody is. It's more like you're getting out of civic confinement and entrapment that you can truly have a longer life and you can <clears throat> learn what to do food wise. Life food, you could learn about it more, which is really three parts calcium and two parts phosphate. Um, and it's like a roughly, um, you know, like a 26% of the body is phosphorus um, as enzyme. And, um, and the wild, white, uh, you know, white blood cells. Um, uh, and so you've got dark and moist air, um, and you can see that things glow. Um, and have a luminescence. I mean, a dull white light when exposed to light. You could see sometimes uh, light bearing that's coming back out of things. I mean, proper DNA and RNA function involves light conduction through the body. Um, and you've got uh, a, uh, a, a, a job constant um, in a protocol, which is your temperature and um, temperature regulation and you've got these hot cold proteins and um, you've got blue and white light and um, it's very bright that um, burns people's eyes and causes uh, uh, you know uh, radiation damage to eyes and things um, and the phase conjugativeness of uh, red uh, blocks red lets blue in and then you know, in our molecules and things you people would learn about, you've got a, a positive magneton hydrogen pump, which is which is pumping and continuously providing hydrogen ions um, and getting that from zero point energy um, and Whoa. inside the mitochondria. And uh, where you've got proper negative redox around my, minus 71 millivolts per square, cent, per square centimetre cube, um, if it went down to minus 20, it's sort of really a sick state. The body can't kind of really depolarize itself. Um, and enzymatic um, aerobic glycolysis gets kicked off and dead in the in the, in the cytoplasm. And um, it produces lactic acid, which puts pressure on the inside of the uh, cells and causes more neoplastic condition once this is going on because it's really a, a um, you know, not proper energy pathway. Um, mm -hmm. I think that um, I think we should just cover just and complete and then maybe there's some questions or something but yeah you know, there's a calcium and phosphorus ratio on life food. If you go beyond that you're gonna get stone. Most people really have stone. And sweating and clearing away things, clearing away all of that really um, really is a parasympathetic activity, sort of to be able to be relaxed. And GABA really is produced when you do your far infrared and you bring in this osmolytic element and then you do far infrared where this is. It's really um, is what neutralizes cortisol and otherwise dopamine and serotonin really has got really nice balance. And then you're determining more how it's just instrument, which could determine for you the conditions of whole brain function. You could learn a bit more about that so you really focus more on practicing more whole brain patterning where you are. Um, and there's so much that you could learn. You've got to sit back, listen. This is like a cooking show. Put it in the background, um, and even um, just have it on.
it's all sort of really locked in there. You've got really great recall for everything. Um, but you've got oxytocin, which really connects everybody together, and you really feel good when, as you feel connected to people, you're releasing oxytocin, you see. And so um, you actually absolutely have to have total darkness, so you can't have light. You know, and you've got enzymes in the body like luciferin, which is an example of protein, which is sort of really a um, release of light. And tyrosine is one of those amino acids, which is really incredible because it's the only one of the major amino acids that actually can carry a mineral within it. And um, like radium um, and other things, which also by, you know, luciferin, that enzyme really is a natural um, length of light, um, which is really, really small. 555 nanometer to 450 nanometer range. You've got natural illumination, and you've got um, um, two medial waves that are natural, not square waves. Um, and so, you know, you and I, we should have proper natural waveform where things are should be um, pyramidal, which is natural, not squared out. So light contributes really more to uh, a synthesis for RNA, which are other nucleic acid, and also protein and you've got a beautiful uh, orange kind of like a glow more um, going on and um, where uh, the body is more you know, in far infrared and as you one loses their far infrared capacity one becomes more cold and melancholy and then and then they're looking at the world oh gee, it's really superficial um, and um, one's driven a bit more with arrogance a bit and anxiety, restless, um, and the temperature at night supposed to fall all through the night. So make sure you turn that turned off so it actually really falls all through the night um, until you wake up in the morning because there's a lot of temperature coming on in the, in the night. It's going to wake anybody up. That's wrong. It's supposed to fall all through the night. So okay. exposure to more artificial things, that's like that, is really wrong. Get rid of all the lights and artificial lights and actually really make sure that actually red light more is at night, not put all white or something just like that. And um, People should really sleep more on their back, not too all curled up and, um, you know, tucked over and um, mm. really breathing all these um, inorganics and stuff um, under the blanket or whatever. But sleep onset latency um, is heightened and the sensitivity to that where somebody's really got a lot of more bright lights towards the end of their night sort of things in there. And so it's a mismatch really of the magnet clock where light pollution is. Um, and if your eyes really are letting light go through more of the pineal gland and stuff, um, it's really um, because of your ability to be able to clear away and keep neoplastic condition at bay, you see. Wow. And so plastics in the body and these sorts of things, um, white, blue, white, all those are things which are hazards, <clears throat> which we could pay attention to get rid of, get rid of all the... Uh, plastics out of the body and sweat them out, you need osmolytic element to do that where that's in our formula. And so high phosphate, high, high methionine food, artificial light kills, we've got these nebulous, like we were talking about how stones form, and they start to form all through the connective tissue and certainly in the pancreas. And these calcium phosphate, calcium carbonate, um, calcium oxalate, and these sorts of stones um, can have a bit of heavy metal deposit there too, and this is all gets into the connective tissue. You've got really a loss of B12, B vitamins, these things. Uh, um, bring back natural light. Um, be careful not to have too much artificial light. Bring back natural wavelength where some quick is. Focus on having more red light at night, warm light, and still cold light. Um, and um, you've got. Uh, you know, it learned helplessness is even if the choice has existed, but still not taking the choice. And I'm learned, uh, Hans Seil did um, experiments in the 60s and 70s that showed this. Today it's called sort of Stockholm Syndrome, where somebody could have fallen in love with a slave to a monkey. Um, and influencing all where something is, where learned helplessness was, is really um, like what called Stockholm Syndrome. So you've got choice where you are. They don't have to be factorised and um, everybody's just not being where you could actually have a relation. And so there you've got a place in the world where most people can't really live together. And the, the Milgram experiment where it's going on really um, is where 33% of people listen to programs like this, 67% of people just would, um, if an authority person was there, they would do you harm. 
if you look into the Milgram experiment, you see. Um, but 33% of people are really like more, and they're not going to be able to change their ethics or whatever. Uh, and otherwise, you've got a really lot of dunning Kruger personality where somebody's really, really, really confident, but what's be like beneath that is just nothing. So I've always just next to nothing. And so roughly three parts of your your body to, to be cast into two parts of a phosphate basic, but roughly um, 20% of the body is really phosphorus where enzyme is and where we're having excessive amounts of that, which you could see going on where life is, which is not life food. Um, these are sorts of things which one should become a bit more aware about, yes? So anyway, um, I think that's a small journey for us a little bit. I wonder might there be some questions, mate. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I think I wrote some down in my phone. Let me grab that real quick. <clears throat> okay. Thank you so much, David. and then it's educational about uh, 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 you know like just as an example you don't sell shoe legit and CMOS Conscious Crispus and some of it's pretty cool um, what's the other one I, I wanted to ask you about they got a, a something called hydroxide appetite Hydroxy appetite yeah. supposed oh, to rebuild your appetite. Supposed that's to rebuild the teeth or something. Yeah, that's right. It sure does. Um, that sure does. Oh, nice. And the things that are that are quite amazing, matter of fact. Um, you've got substances which could help grow and repair, and um, you've got substances which could clear away things. Um, today, I would say um, it would be good that someone could understand what goes on where someone can have had a flu or even something because a lot of education um, isn't, isn't uh, proper. But um, you've got, you know, uh, melatonin being secreted and <clears throat> most don't know how important melatonin is. It's one of the most um, a powerful antioxidants, even more powerful than glutathione um, in, the, in the body. 
and that is supposed to be produced, um, you know. Um, and uh, in our cells, you know, it, 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 it's really important that it's produced. <clears throat> if you, your insight below is logged, um, you've got something pretty cognitive, and now <clears throat> you can process this new information, right? So let's say somebody's caught temperature drop because they have food, right? Um, and now they know that was because of um, E. coli over being over exposing a cold shot protein because the core temperature of the body drops, you know, maybe seven degrees for two hours, and so the colloid that's in the intestine um, transmutated more because cold shot protein was released. And so that's going to cause some of the some of the fever. And what's that bring on? It brings on heat shot protein after that. But done. Um, where anybody was with it for two hours and their core temperature was in an environment more, which was only 50 to 59, I mean, it didn't really, um, um, uh, 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 were in the circumstances when it got cold, um, cold shock protein would have been slowly released over a few hours. And finally, somebody would go, oh, wow, we've got a season. We're going to to it. Comes on heat shock protein that raises the temperature to 103 or something like that, and then the E. coli sort of can't exist where that is. And so the body really has a mechanism to raise the lower temperature and aggregate diffusion and differentiation occurs from non overreactive sort of express cold shock protein where fever is and lipid protection really. Right, looks like we got enough chemo for one more batch. If more that. Like, like um, we're going to, have to do a half batch. It really uh, are uh, essential, you know, for Need these two and a half cups. Um, to get triggered and um, get kicked off. And um, you've got substances that activate the B cells, which, are which really is produced more where the eyes are. Isn't that amazing? You see, you've got melatonin, um, which easily uh, passes through any membrane. It's really, really quite high um, lipid. Loving meaning uh, lipophilicity and also more loving too, hydrophilicity. So it's really found in a widespread number of all the cells and low weight fragments of that molecule stimulate melatonin and uh, jumps Use back anyway. out um, and berries and nuts and seeds all contain melatonin, wild thyme and digest aid, of course, do. And, and, um, uh, and then um, uh, it gets clear, clearing away of uh, high methionine, which really is that spike protein, which is actually getting with the spike protein. So melatonin really is very hypothermic, um, and it could generate um, 40 to 50 percent of the circadian core temperature um, whilst um, someone's sleeping, um, and under a hypocapnic kind of condition, meaning you know, over of of their carbon. It could have caused skin temperature to really become markedly impaired, which usually it does and it really becomes quite cold. And it would it causes a reduced level of melatonin in circulation. And um, where someone is uh, not, uh, mouth breathing, um, they, their tonsil tissue being on the back of the nose and the throat, where the orbital organ is, becomes um, inflamed and congested. And degrees of tissue hypoxia goes on. And, um, wow low light exposure impacts and blocks melatonin production. And so congestion and light and these things um, could of course glucose and cardiovascular function to be not well as what it could be because you really um, could be learning a bit more how <clears throat> melatonin is naturally produced and this sort of thing. But what's another question you might make here, mate? Yeah. Okay. myself as a kid and um, I just took, took um, what was was offered in terms of um, relationships and things uh, this one person at, at my old gym she hooked me up with a, a surgeon and he 
he did a septoplasty and it didn't correct the broken nose that I have. Right. So, uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, I really, like, can't breathe out of one side of my nose. Um, right. Well, that, could, that should be corrected as it can be, which can be. Um, turn the knuckle and things just like that. It's really common for people to get a picture where they do a CAT scan. Many people know that like, um, don't have or have deviated septal um, conditions. Um, and granted that um, where somebody has the capacity to be to the nose, there must be the nose, um, and it can be uh, opening up itself as a result of what happens when you sleep, you'd be noticed if, if there's a breath through the nose all the way through sleep or there isn't. Um, but um, next to not much breath is necessary when one sleeps, so it's sort of weak. Um, nose could be really not much where it could be, but perfectly fine enough for resting and this sort of thing. Um, okay. um, the very thing which, which could exist where that is exactly do some hot cold therapy um, and where you do ice and heat and you do far infrared um, and uh, if you do some urine therapy during the first time where you're, you're snorting urine um, oh, yeah. and um, you're uh, becoming more... Rick, currently stuffing my face with dino pretzels. I like them and I'm not a fan of mustard. Oh! Yo, that's great news. Thank you for that, my man. Mm. Because mustard goes with pretzels, right? I mean, I'm not trying to say like you should like mustard. I'm just saying in terms of what, I, what I'm thinking as a recipe. I'm thinking like, you know, mustard and pretzels, they kind of go together. Or like, or, um, you know, not that they go together, but I think if you like the texture the most. Yeah, because it, it cracks, right? Cracks like a real pretzel. Nice. Now this one, this one, it has sea moss in it. So, you know, I'm just being intuitive and I'm saying that maybe the next batch I'll either put less mustard I think I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna send you some more and I want you to tell me if the sea moss put here next batch one quarter teaspoon mustard question mark because a uh, sea moss Usually, what it does in a recipe is it, it, um, what's the word? Holds things together. So if you like the texture, I don't want to ruin it by adding sea moss and making it too tough. So we'll see. You're going to be my taste tester. So holding the breath, then you do the top and go up blender that could you hear it going wah, wah, wah. I gotta bring it into the shop next week you're gonna have to help me um, put this make this recipe a commercial recipe I, I might have told you this already but the dino buns they they can't become a product because they're baked and technically that's not light food because light food has to be easy to digest. And when 
I sprouted all those seeds and baked them up. They lose their enzyme activity and they're not easy to digest anymore. And as much of an awesome recipe as I think it was and is, as a transition, um, you know, I, I owe it to David to, um, not compromise, you know, I think that's going to be a, a good way to, to move forward is to have a recipe that like this, which is still good according to you. And still 100% life food. It's like, why not be the best? You know? Why not? You got an answer for that? I don't think so. So the difference in this recipe is sea moss and nutritional yeast. Pretty much everything else is the same. And then the other thing I'm going to do is dust them with, I'm going to, I'm going to grind the di the dino scales to be more of a powder and they're going to be more like dusted. The pretzels are going to be more the dust, more dusted rather than have like pieces of, um, pieces of pumpkin seeds. They're going to. You know, have, you get what I'm saying. Dust it. Oh man, this really looks like, like dough right now. How it's sticking together. Ooh, should go lefty. Get you over here, this way. This way you don't shake around. There we go. Lefty. Okay, now I did want to have these done by tomorrow, but I think I'm going to have to let them sit overnight. Try to remember the, the size of that. 
and we'll see if it rises. Go, go, Master Lukey. Mm -hmm. Master Lukey's League of Champions. So the mice don't get in there. Little bastards. Um, Alright, so... The last thing I'll do is I'm just gonna grind up the dino scales. I'm not gonna put them on because you gotta wait for that to rise. But I'll do this. You've got a great capacity to be able to clear away tissue which only can have formed like that because of hypercapnia. Um, the other thing is that where someone only is monophasic, um, that meaning only in a dinner good because it's a 24 hour cycle and our body's only designed to have monophasic things where somebody has lunch and dinner that's diphasic, this doesn't work, they've got more humps going on. Uh, try phasing that breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's got like a hell of a lot of fun going on. And, um, um, so the more quiet the breath is, and the more opportunity uh, the body has to be able to bring in these cold shock proteins, which clear and break um, things down. So, cold is used where the conditions are like that, just the same as hot. So, in doing a bit of hot cold therapy on this, I think it'd be proposed that you could shift the things where the tissue is, you see. Um, and, um, and because of that, now, uh, the tissue can shrink back to what it's supposed to be. No pressure exists. Um, and, um, uh, cortisol otherwise, um, always would have released excessive gerolin. Uh, that always would have caused uh, someone to feel like restless and have done things to cause themselves feel better versus when you don't have cortisol, gerolin is present and that causes you to feel like hungry. Um, and then when you don't eat, um, your, your stomach is signaling that it's empty um, and that's causing gerolin to be released more. And as gerolin is released more, it's protecting your cardiovascular system, protecting all the breath through the nose, uh, protecting all the organs, um, having proper melatonin and these sorts of things is very important. Um, you do this hot cold therapy, um, and um, I mean, I'm talking about hot cold therapy on the nose and the face to help clear up this gap for me. Um, as our breath can be off, which I guarantee you, you'll absolutely improve. Things longer, and you'll see the tone of your face is actually improved. So why not in, why not completely therapeutically do a makeover on the head? Which one can, and when one should, and why not spend a little bit of time with somebody like wood, like with a joint or with anything else, you know? Um, you're putting a bit of energy or something, which is really, um, um, you're eating fewer calories if somebody's doing the injury to because it's very smooth elevator. If you've got tooth to frame and things like this, um, you've got a natural tasting of food, um, a smell. I'm going to do all this at once. You, you, you're relaxing and taking time Let's see. to be consumed and something when you do. Um, <clears throat> you're, uh, um, Oh yeah. 
Dusty. Let's go. So this is gonna. be the you know the the salt on the pretzel so yeah that's it then signing off for now what is it eight o'clock um i'm gonna do the news i'm wondering if i should do it live or record it and then release it at midnight Who's in this? I see one viewer. Is that you, Rick? Should I go live for the news? Let me wash my hands because I just wiped my nose. I'm going to put this in there. Let me know. I'm going to make a salad, and if you want me to go live, I'll, I'll come back on at 9 after I do the dishes and have my salad. Talk to me, whoever's in the chat. Rick, is that you? Go live, you got it. All right, give me an hour. Uh, uh, maybe maybe less than an hour. Do you have noties on? You'll know when I come on. It's just gonna be an hour long show, but what's good for you? I should be able to jump on in about a half an hour. I'll make my salad real quick and uh, Yo, tomorrow's card though, right? Crazy! Alright, so I'll see you in a little bit. You'll be here? I need to catch up. Your articles are usually relevant. Yeah, I think... I think they're relevant to me too, so... Let's see what's on the menu, okay? I'll be right back. Uh, give me a half hour.